Oh, uh, let's go ahead and talk about this shit. You know, right now, I'm getting ready to play you guys an older clip I did a long time ago. Adrian Broner, the truth of him sparring Errol Spence. We know we got plenty of rumors going on with that. You know, you got people saying that Adrian Broner got knocked out. You got people saying that, you know, Adrian Broner got dropped. He didn't get knocked out. Well, I'm going to tell you guys the absolute truth. This is not watered down. I know exactly what happened in that spawn with Errol Spence and Adrian Broner. And believe it or not, Errol Spence and Adrian Broner had success in the spawn. But go ahead and get your popcorn, your beer, your weed, whatever you need to relax and chill. Because I'm going to tell you guys a good sparring story pertaining to this. All right? Enjoy. The counterpunch. Now I know a lot of people out there will say, man, love when the hate when we already heard this story millions of times. We don't need to hear it again. That may be true, but what you didn't hear a lot of people say was the success that Adrian Broner had in the sparring and what led up to the sparring. That's what a lot of people don't talk about. See, you guys, good storytellers tell you everything from the beginning to the end, not just what's important, not just the big stuff. Good storytellers tell you everything, okay? Good storytellers are very detail-oriented, and that's what I try to be. Now, let's talk about the initial stages between Adrian Broner and Errol Spence. And this was actually a beef. Yes, before these guys respected each other, they actually did not like each other at all, y'all. Yes, I know they've called each other brother before, but they still be beefing to this day. So just know that after the sparring, that's when Adrian Broner and Errol Spence really gained respect for each other. All right. But what a lot of people don't know is Mayweather had a lot to do with this sparring session between Errol Spence and Adrian Broner. That's how Errol Spence and Mayweather, that was kind of the root to why they fought in sparring. Not only to perfect their skills and things of that nature, but they also fought because of what happened to Adrian Broner. Kind of like that Marcos Maidana versus Adrian Broner feeling. You know, Adrian Broner lost to Marcos Maidana and Mayweather said, you know what, Marcos Maidana, we got to fight now. That's kind of how it went with Mayweather and Errol Spence. But we're going to save that for another volume of my sparring stories. Right now, we're going to stay on Errol Spence and Adrian Broner. But Mayweather is the root of this sparring session as well. Well, partially the root. All right. And we're going to get deeper on the Marcos Maidana versus Adrian Broner fight too. Because that fight right there had a lot of similarities with the sparring between Errol Spence and Adrian Broner. But get your popcorn, get your beer, get your weed. Cause we're going to talk about all that, y'all. Your boy love one and hate one got the scoop. All right. Now, building up to my point. Okay. Because we get into... The main shebang bang pretty soon. So basically, Mayweather was promoting this fight, letting Derrick James, Errol Spence know, Errol Spence's whole team know that Adrian Broner is gonna put those paws on them, you know, put on the gloves. We could do it at Mayweather's gym. It don't matter where we do it at, Adrian Broner, he can't be touched. Adrian Broner was saying the same shit. Errol Spence is saying Errol Spence is not going to be able to touch him. He's going to outbox him. You know, he's the best counterpuncher in the game right now. He's too fast for Errol Spence. 
all this shit. You guys remember before the Marcos made down the fight, Errol, I mean, not Errol Spence, Adrian Broner was that guy. He was like the next Mayweather, and he was showing it a lot in the ring. He was like Mayweather with power. Adrian Broner was quick cat reflexes, could fight on the inside and the outside. And he displayed a lot of that versus Errol Spence. <laughs> That's what's crazy. Errol Spence was, I mean, Adrian Broner was undefeated at that time. Just as well as Errol Spence. Adrian Broner at this time, he thought nobody in the world was fuck with him. Not even Mayweather. So just imagine that Errol Spence. Adrian Broner's cockiness was through the roof. He's telling everybody how he's going to go in this sparring and dog walk Errol Spence. Kind of di really disrespecting Errol Spence, y'all. Big shit. Errol Spence will say a few words here and there, but not a really big trash talker. Just letting Adrian Broner know, I'm going to prove my skill in the ring while you just talk. But shit, at this time... Adrian Broner, even though he is a smaller guy, Adrian Broner and Errol Spence was fighting at the same weight, basically at that time. And Adrian Broner, he was down there. He was the favorite. Because a lot of people was believing Adrian Broner. Because at that time, we all thought that Adrian Broner, at least we knew he had the skill to be the next Mayweather shit. Or something close to him, for damn sure. So, Adrian Broner, this, Adrian Broner sold this sparring session so much. Even guys like Bernard Hopkins, Oscar De La Hoya, um, Freddie Roach came out to see this sparring. People came out to see this sparring, y'all, like it was an actual fight. Like it was a mega event. <laughs> That's what's funny. <laughs> Shit. A lot of people was excited about seeing this spar. And the people that I named just now, y'all, there was a lot more people than that. I'm just not going to sit here and bring up all the names, but it was a lot of people that witnessed that epic sparring between Errol Spence and Adrian Broner. And even as they were walking to the ring, even as they was preparing to go into the ring, Adrian Broner still talking trash, still trying to get into Errol Spence's head, Still saying how he ain't going to be able to touch him. How he's too fast. Too quick. How he can do everything to in the ring. Too much power. Man. So back to my point. Where I told you guys. This fight right here. Well the sparring right here. It reminds me a lot. Of the Marcos Maidana. Versus Adrian Broner fight. Because when Adrian Broner. Started sparring Errol Spence. They went about. Four to five rounds. For what I'm hearing. Adrian Broner came out. Looking sensational. Because even though Adrian Broner. Lost to Marcos Maidana. Even though Adrian Broner got. Dropped by. Marcos Maidana. Hurt by Marcos Maidana. Adrian Broner still looks sensational in spurts against Marcos Maidana. Let's not forget. And I'm hearing the same thing happen against Errol Spence. Adrian Broner came out landing shots on Errol Spence. Counter punches. Showing the speed. Showing the foot speed. Showing the hand speed. Showing the ability to fight on the inside and the outside. You know. Showing great reflexes, showing great timing, showing great accuracy. 
on Errol Spence. Slightly. And yes, I do mean slightly. Started to frustrate Errol Spence. And Errol Spence, just like Marcos Maidana, listen to my similarities and my examples, y'all. My analogy is A1. So Adrian Broner, after winning the first two rounds, clearly looking sensational, came out in the third round being too cocky. And Errol Spence showed his ability to adjust, as you can see in the clip here. Once Errol Spence, just pretend like Marcus Maidana is Errol Spence, because once Errol Spence started to turn up and put that pressure on Adrian Broner, he didn't know what to do. Errol Spence started attacking the body. Errol Spence started just throwing punches after punches, punches and bunches on Adrian Broner. And Adrian Broner was flustered. Adrian Broner was all over the place. Adrian Broner could not handle that pressure, that hand speed, and that power from Errol Spence. I don't know what it was. Maybe Errol Spence took a while to step on the gas. Maybe he came out wanted to fill out Adrian Broner. Maybe he came out saying, you know what, I'm going to play with Adrian Broner for a minute. But whatever he came out to do benefited Adrian Broner because Adrian Broner, as I said before, was showing sparks of greatness against Errol Spence. Even was showing phenomenal defense against Errol Spence because Errol Spence was missing a whole lot of shots until the third round. So, I'm letting you guys know we're going to get into the main shebang bang, which is the famous knockdown, what ended the down fight. But I'm letting you guys know what led up to the knockdown because Adrian Broner, and this is how you know Adrian Broner got grit and he is a dog and he do got heart because Adrian Broner didn't fold. Adrian Broner, shit, he said, fuck that. It turned into a dog fight. And we know Errol Spence got grit as well. So they was just in there locking like pit bulls, just locking on each other. You know, Adrian Broner, was getting beat up at this point by Errol Spence. But, you know, Adrian Broner was still landing some shots. You know, even shook Errol Spence up with a couple shots. Didn't hurt him. Shook him up, you know. Caught up with some shots, just like Marcos Maidana said. Shit, Adrian Broner caught up with some shit. But Adrian Broner was in there trying to sleep Errol Spence. Like, literally put Errol Spence to sleep. And knock out Errol Spence. Boxing was out the window at this point. Then. <laughs> Errol Spence trying to basically hook with a hooker. Got caught with a, a punch that sent his ass to the canvas. Adrian Broner got up very hurt. Very hurt. A lot of people say Adrian Broner got knocked out. No, Adrian Broner got up so fucking hurt. Everybody on Adrian Broner team said it is over. Stop the fight because we know it's going to get even worse if Adrian Broner goes back out there and fight. Because Adrian Broner is not going to stop fighting himself. And that makes a whole lot of sense. Then at this point, Adrian Broner tries to turn it into a street fight. You know, basically try to make something continue that wasn't and shouldn't have continued. And Adrian Broner, you know, getting all loud, causing a lot of extra commotion and chaos in the gym. So Adrian Broner had to be escorted out. Um, I heard at one point they even considered calling the police. That's how serious it got with Adrian Broner trying to kill Errol Spence and it was all out of just flat out embarrassment because yes you were still undefeated at that time Adrian Broner but you just took your first loss in the gym that's for damn sure and yes I can say a loss because it was way too many people there and like I told you guys before people treated this like it was an actual fight people came to this fight people came to this gym like it was an event like it was pay-per-view 
So that's why I'm saying that was an L that day. But it was a lot of experience on both behalves and they're cool now and gained a lot of respect from each other after this. All right, y'all. And afterwards, I'm going to hit y'all with the sparring stories between Mayweather and Errol Spence. And that's going to be volume three. Or I'm out.